welcome everybody to Futurama with Nerds. This is episode six. I'm Alex Billings, and this is my co-host Ryan Lecknoise. Hello. All right. So today we're going to be reviewing episode six of season one, A Fish Full of Dollars. Yeah, I always think this one is later in the series than it is. Yeah, I don't know why. I mean, I don't know why either. It just it feels like a season three episode to me, even though I mean, it's not. But I always forget that it's like episode six. Yeah, very early one. Uh, yeah. So this one was written by Patrick Roan and originally aired on April 25th of 1999. Is he one of the again, I ask you this every time. Is he a prolific writer on the show? Yeah, he's, a, he's one that's around for a lot, and he produces a bunch of episodes and stuff. Okay, so I'm going to guess that most of the first season people are, like, the prolific ones, because there's only there's only a handful of episodes in the first production season. I don't know. I mean, we're on the sixth episode, and there's already been three where there are people who only wrote that one episode. Oh, really? I, yeah. I forget. Okay, anyway, go ahead. So, this episode, we start with Fry sleeping and we go into his dream and he's having you know the common nightmare where he's in a class that he doesn't remember taking and it's the final exam and it's ancient egyptian algebra you know he's freaking out and then he's like it could only get worse if i'm in my underwear and then it zooms out and he's in his underwear but then it cuts into like a commercial and saying he should have worn light spree light speed briefs and it does a whole commercial about how light speed briefs would make his life so much better and everything would be good and then he wakes up screaming oof that was weird never get back to sleep immediately falls back asleep yeah i always found it funny because like the light speed briefs i mentioned it when we just watched this they look like the least comfortable underwear because they have like wings on them from some right like how is that how are you gonna wear pants with those things i mean yeah that's the only thing is the wings but yeah it's just how it wouldn't be able to wear anything over it like i guess they tried to make them look sci-fi or something but the weird leg wings just i I don't know i just i don't know (laughs) yeah i mean they must have been going for a sci-fi look for them yeah yeah so then it cuts to the next morning at planet express and he's talking with the crew and they basically explain that that's normal that everybody has commercials beamed into their minds now while they're sleeping yeah professor uses the example of it's the same way this liquid gets into an egg and he takes a needle and puts it into an egg and fills it with liquid and the egg explodes and he says but in real life it's not liquid but gamma radiation yeah, it didn't say anything about the exploding eggs, so nope. semi-worrisome. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, Fry's a little upset. They're putting commercials into people's minds, and everyone else is just like, they, you know, they had ads back then, and Fry lists off. He's like, well, yeah, but only on TV and magazines and radio and the sides of buses and benches and at ball games and on bananas and written in the sky, <laughs> but not in our dreams. Not in our dreams. Makes a point of that. They do talk about, I guess... The reason the bananas is in there as a joke was because at the time, I think it was ABC was actually talking about putting ads on bananas. Oh, really? Like a little sticker. (laughs) I wonder if that would have been a smart investment. Well, the thing is now I've actually seen, I don't think I've ever seen them in a store, but I've seen pictures online of bananas that have like pictures of Marvel characters on them. Really? Yeah, on the stickers. Interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, at some point it happened. I mean, I, I don't, I don't see anything against it. Like... It's yeah. not like a sticker on the peel does anything. It's just I wouldn't expect that to be like a go-to advertising play sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, I guess someone's doing it. Yeah. And it must have been considered highly by ABC at one point. So yeah, they basically just tell them it's no big deal. You know, they all see ads in their dreams, but no one's forcing them to buy anything. And they sort of sit there for a second in silence and all run out to the to go to the mall to go shopping to go buy those things in their dreams fry you know is looking at the light speed briefs and he tries on the demo pair because he's not allowed to open a package which is very disturbing to me yeah i don't think i would ever want to try on a demo pair of underwear there's too much yep <laughs> too much ways that could go horribly wrong that it just it, i'd rather just guesstimate the size <laughs> yeah but you know it looks good in the mirror he does see that the mirror says objects in the mirror may look more attractive than they actually are yeah but he's you know he's gonna try to buy them Meanwhile, it cuts to some of the other people just doing some shopping. The big thing is uh, Bender's in the robot accessories area, and he has a big sweater on, and he's, you know, jamming things under his sweater, mainly mom's friendly robot oil. Yeah. She jams in. But then we see Fry trying to buy his light speed briefs, and it's, you know, he realizes he doesn't have anything that works as money here because they don't take Visa or MasterCard or, or those things don't exist. They don't exist, but Discover, they Yeah, they just don't accept Discover card. Apparently, it outlives Visa and MasterCard in the future. Yep. He basically gives up, realizing he can't buy them. They see a commercial on a nearby TV, and this is where we get our introduction to the first new character of this, which is Mom. Kind of like the villain of the series, if you really think about it. Uh, I mean, not the whole series, but she is kind of a villain. She's, you know, she's portrayed in the commercial as this friendly old lady who's the owner of Mom's Friendly Robot Company, yep. which is the company that makes all the robots and all the accessories for them. You know, you learn pretty quickly in the episode that she's, you know, actually evil, but she portrays herself as super nice and kind. Yeah, a business ploy sort of thing. Yeah, and right after the commercial ends, 
you know, Fry says to Bender, it sounds like he could use some of that oil because he's all jingling. But then all the stuff starts pouring out of his sweater and it just keeps coming and coming. It'll stop and then he'll start like, I believe there's a reason. And then more will pour out. And she gets out that he, there must be a reasonable explanation. But, you know, he just gets arrested because it was a ton of stuff. Yeah, an obscene amount, mostly oil, but there were like necklaces and other things thrown in there. Yeah, so he gets arrested and Fry, Leela, and Amy are going to bail him out, but they're 50 cents short of his bail or his fine. Which was $80, apparently. Yeah, it was $80. Fry notices out the window that there's a branch of his bank, which is Big Apple Bank. Yep. Right there. So he decides to go and see if he has any money in his account. He goes, you know, the bank says they, they don't have his fingerprint, retinal scan, or colonic map on file. But he's, you know, he asks about his, his debit card. So they pull out like the old machine and blow it off. And they ask if he still remembers his PIN number. And he says, yeah, of course I do. It's the same as a cheese pizza and a large soda back where I used to work at Panucci's Pizza. So he swipes it, types it in. They cut away so you don't see the PIN number. Yeah. But uh, the woman, then it comes up and the teller's like, okay, so you had a balance of 93 cents. And Fred's like, hey. And she's like, and you know what? Two and a quarter percent interest per compounded over a thousand years. That comes out to $4.3 billion. Now, I remember you telling me this. That's the actual amount it would have been been too right yes that is the real math the writers have said they tried they like they calculated it out multiple times to be sure that is the correct amount and uh i mean they even said at the time they had two math phds on the writing staff but they're like yeah that is the correct amount i mean the big thing is in real life it just that the account would have gotten closed when he was declared dead was yeah because he was declared dead. i mean at some point he would have to be declared dead yeah it just wouldn't keep compounding interest for a thousand years no and we they also don't take inflation into yeah consideration for this show because a thousand years from now if things are going the way they're going 4.3 billion dollars probably isn't that much it, yeah it's hard to say i mean a billion could still be quite a bit but it could be but it could be similar to what like a million dollars maybe is now versus they still treat it like everything's the same right here but you know whatever it's it's a funny little joke and it's really impressive that they figured out that was it 93 cents it was something like that 93 93 it was 90 something yeah what ended up being 4.3 billion which is 2.25 percent interest still crazy to think that that's a lot to come out of almost nowhere right like yeah it's one of those weird things where math is just like when you look at percentages how it compounds so quickly over time yeah yeah so he starts just foaming at the mouth and passes out well i mean you just found out you're a billionaire (laughs) oh yeah it's you know pretty nuts yep and then they just cut to them back at planet express and everyone's sort of celebrating fry being rich all wearing top hats and monocles and smoking cigars and everything like rich people do and then they cut into a, a montage of them you know doing all these crazy things the uh the first thing is they go to a place called le spa and it's you know fry and leela getting massages and then you see bender getting buffed and here actually the guy buffing bender is the character model of scruffy yeah is this the first time we see scruffy so it is he wasn't named and he doesn't have a talking role it's just the character model they made yeah although his mustache is brown here instead of gray okay but yeah it's the first time scruffy Scruffy, shows up the janitor yeah later he doesn't come in for quite a while as the janitor honestly really they just they held on to this model i guess then yeah it's probably more likely at some point they wrote a thing and they're like hey we need a janitor and they were just like what models do we have that we could maybe use for that yeah instead of making something new let's just bring this guy over yeah which i guess they do at some point Mm -hmm. but anyways that's it's really nothing in the episode like he doesn't really do anything yeah it's not even scruffy it's just a guy who's sanding bender yeah, they continue through the montage like they, you know, they pay to get the Mona Lisa and they do uh, like skeet shooting with the Mona Lisa, yep. they, you know, get the massages. And then eventually Fry gets an apartment that's designed to be like 20th century apartments. So everything's like that old style. The sign even says even with original asbestos. <laughs> Which is quite funny. While they're there, they do have a little joke where uh, Bender's making fun of the TV being a 20th century TV. And he's like, you know, they have such bad quality images. And then Amy's like, yeah, you probably couldn't even see my obscene tattoo. And she like rolls up her sleeve and it's too blurry for you to make out what it is. Is, but everyone's laughing at it yeah because obviously we have 20th century tvs and therefore we cannot make that out i mean now we have 21st century TVs. But, <laughs> yeah when that came out was the joke yeah i mean the uh, the writers did say they had the animation studio like submit a bunch of designs but no one could remember what any of them were because they said they didn't really matter yeah they were gonna blur it out regardless exactly right? but they were like yeah everyone made a whole bunch because you know if you ask editor or animators to make an obscene tattoo they'll get right on that yeah especially one that's like make an obscene tattoo that's not going to be shown sort of thing like all wheels are off yeah exactly but then it goes to a uh, fry bender and leela at an auction for 20th century stuff and fry is just buying everything you know he buys bender some rock'em sock'em robots and he buys ted dancing skeleton yeah and we know this he spent what ten thousand dollars on ted dancing skeleton 
Yeah, which it feels like is not enough. No, like I could afford that. Like I could, it would cost me a good penny and I wouldn't have a lot of money left over, but I could technically pay that, which doesn't seem right. I mean, I feel like I could be wrong, but I feel like just a regular human skeleton should cost more than $10,000, let alone a celebrity's skeleton. You would think. Begs the question as to how they procured said skeleton so cheaply. Yeah. It's also interesting that that kind of shows that I guess Ted Danson doesn't become a head in a jar. Nope. Even though all the other celebrities do. I guess he wasn't big enough. (laughs) Oh, you know what? Honestly, we missed a scene from earlier that we should have talked about where they went to a pizzeria. Yes. And... As is after the Fry Fender, he got their money and he wants to buy everybody pizza. And the main thing is he tries to order a pizza with anchovies. And the, the robot guy who works at the place just says that's not a thing, does not compute. Fry repeats anchovies and the guy's head explodes. Yeah. And the professor tells him the anchovies have been extinct since like the 2200s, which is right around the time Zoidberg's people came. Eventually, Zoidberg breaks down and says his people ate all the anchovies. Yeah, I'm kind of glad you remembered this scene because it's uh, it's pretty crucial. The backbone of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't. It's somewhere in there with like the montages and after he finds out he has the money. Yeah, yeah. Between then and where we are now. Yeah. Because the next item in the auction is the last known can of anchovies in existence. Yes, fresh and edible. Yeah, guaranteed fresh and edible. So Fry starts bidding on it. A few other people people do a little bit and then eventually mom bids on it and everyone's like oh it's mom the fr- old, the old friendly old lady and you know people are like you can't bid against her she's so nice and they get into a little bidding war of just going back and forth until eventually fry pays 50 million dollars which i think the war started it was ten thousand dollars was the initial bid and then it just escalated to 50 million like yeah quite high so very clearly he wants his anchovies yeah but at this point we also see mom clearly wants them but we don't know why yet yes and she's such a sweet old lady so who knows at this point it cuts to i believe the next part is cuts to mom and she's you know getting home with her sons so she has three sons and as soon as she gets inside she like opens up her body because she looks like a fat old lady and it opens up and pops out and she's like this emaciated skinny lady and she's like immediately starts swearing and getting mean and she's this square it's clearly revealed she's like a villain yeah so and this is also the introduction of her three sons who are walt larry and igner which are clearly meant to be the three stooges yes and they do quite a good job of being the three stooges yeah they're they're definitely written as they talked about it as originally she had two sons and then they thought the rule of three for comedy was too good so they decided to keep that yep and they sort of all have their own personalities like igner who's the youngest is really dumb in fact his name is spelt i-g-n-e-r like ignorant yeah. Uh, Walt, who's the oldest, he's kind of like the sub mom where he's just really mean to the other two because mom's mean to all of them. She yells at them all, all the time and yeah. s- slaps them. That's like an ongoing thing. And then Larry is just kind of scared, I guess, like yeah. the middle son. It, yeah, he's he's a weird one. But yeah, he just kind of gets beat up a lot. Yeah, he's the least personality, I'd say, to the three of them. But yeah, he's kind of the scaredy one, I guess. Yeah. And mom basically explains the reason why she wants the anchovies so bad is that a big part of what Mom's Friendly Robot Company makes their money off of is the oil, because apparently every robot needs an oil change every 10,000 miles, just like a car. Yep. Was it 10,000 or 3,000? I don't know. In my mind, she's saying 10,000, but... I- either way, it's a uh, periodically they need an oil change. Yeah, and then she reveals that one drop of anchovy oil is enough to lubricate 10 robots forever. Which is ludicrous, because that just doesn't make any sense. Well, in a sci-fi world, apparently it does. I guess. (laughs) To which, yeah, her one son Larry is like, oh, it's too bad they went extinct. And she's like, no, it isn't. Shut your clam. And then Walt slaps him. Walt, yeah, I like like mom. Yeah, mom and the sons are pretty great. I think they're funny. Yeah. She basically says, you know, if someone wanted to, they could take the DNA that makes the oil from the anchovies, splice it into some third world children, and then have, bam, free efficient robot oil forever. Yeah, clearly showing that she is not a good person. She's not a good business owner. She is a very diabolical, cold-hearted, capitalist human. Yeah, she's a good business owner. She's just not a good person business owner. Sorry, by good business, no, I mean, like, she doesn't do things ethically. She just, she's... They're stereotypical capitalist overlord. Well, yeah, in her mind, she's like, yeah, of course you would splice the DNA into some third world orphans. Yeah, what's the issue with that? That's the best thing to do. Yeah, but she establishes that in the bank, her company owns the surveillance cams. So they have the surveillance cam of Fry getting his money out. And, you know, when he says it's his pin number is the same as a cheese pizza and a large soda at Panucci's Pizza, but his body blocks it so she can't see it. So she sends her three sons to get his pin number so that we uh, have it go to Fry's new apartment and Bender and Leela come in and they're, you know, telling him he has to sort of do more with his life because he's just sitting in the dark now watching old VHS tapes and playing in what they call classical music, which is Baby Got Back by Sir Mix-a-Lot. Yep. Obviously, at the time, it would be classical. It's a thousand years old. Yeah, it's very interesting to think about that being considered classical music. Well, I heard like a couple years ago, like classic rock station was playing some 41. And I'm like, yeah, it's about that time, but weird, right? Yeah. And, you know, 
Fry basically tells him he doesn't need them anymore because he has everything he needs in his new apartment from his old life. So then, you know, he's sitting there by himself and the three sons show up. They say they're the plumbers he ordered. Yep. He didn't, but he comes and he opens the door. They jump on him and they drug him. And then he wakes up what's on clearly like a soundstage. Yeah, I love this whole scene because the idiocy of Fry is so perfectly on display here that I just, you're giggling at how stupid he is, but it it also, it plays well to his character the whole time. Yeah, he wakes up and like Walt's there with a big fake mustache and he's like, oh, you're welcome back to where you work at Panucci's Pizza in the year 2000. He's like, who are you? And he's like, I'm Mr. Panucci. And his only thought is, did you grow a mustache last night? And the guy pulls it off. He's like, no. He doesn't realize that it's a completely different person aside from that. Yeah, nothing about anything is at, all realistic but it's just fry is so stupid that he just goes with it well yeah the place doesn't even look like panucci's pizza no there's one item on the menu it's a large cheap pizza and a soda and anchovies are on the menu so that he thinks it's the year 2000 because clearly they're not extinct yet (laughs) and then you know they're like oh i think i hear a customer coming and you know it cuts to out in the other room and walton or not walt larry and igner are helping the head of pamela anderson who is actually played by pamela anderson yep which would have been a big get at the time because this aired in 99 it was probably recorded in like 98 yep that's pretty you know peak her fame yeah yeah i don't think it would have been overly hard to get her because peak her fame was like still wasn't giant but i mean she was a pretty big name at the time she would have been a household name she was a household name for sure but she wasn't making much outside of probably vip at that time Well, she might have still been on Baywatch. I don't know when exactly she left. Could have been Baywatch or VIP, but it wasn't like... The height of her career isn't like trying to get Robert Downey Jr. No, but you know, it's still a pretty big get for your season one. For sure, for sure. But yeah, they put her head on top of Igner's body with like a turtleneck dress on it. Yeah. And by her head, you mean the jar. Yeah, the jar with the head in it. Again, very clearly not... 20th century well, yeah and she's like eight feet tall because she's on top of igner's head yeah but yeah she goes in and fries you know kind of excited that it's her and she orders a cheese pizza and a large soda and they pop it up immediately and fries like well, that was quick and she's like yeah what do i owe you and he's like 1077 same as my pin number I like the joke in this one, too, where she's talking about Baywatch, the movie, the first movie ever shot in fully in slow motion. And I'm just funny because the joke is supposed to be that Baywatch was never going to get a movie until, what, five years ago, Baywatch got a movie? Yeah, yeah, it did get a movie. She had a cameo in it. Not shot in slow motion, though, so a little bit disappointing. And I don't think she won the Oscar for it, but... Well, no. Again, I, I think she just had a cameo if she was in it at all. Yeah, she shows up at the end. But yeah, it's, you know, The Rock and uh, Zac Efron. Yep. Yeah, but no, she she has a cameo at the end. She pops up. Yeah. I mean, how how can you have a Baywatch movie without Pamela Anderson in it? Yeah, I imagine her and probably David Hasselhoff probably had a cameo too. I don't know if David Hasselhoff did, but I know Pamela Anderson did. Anyway. Yeah, anyways, a little tangent. But yeah, they all start laughing at Fry and Fry starts to laugh too, just to fit in. And then Igner says, you don't get to laugh and takes Pamela Anderson's jar and smacks him on the head with it and knocks him out. And at this point, they cut to them dumping him back at his apartment. They have all his money. And they're like, thanks a billion. More like 4.3 billion and drive off. Yeah. And Fry is passed out on the sidewalk and it goes into you see his dream and he's, you know, seeing like the jar can of anchovies and 1077 and money and then Fry and Leela and he's like, oh, thank God. I, you know, I had a dream where I was back in the 20th century and I never met you guys and it was horrible. And they're like, why? I thought you didn't need us anymore. You just want to sit at home and listen to stuffy old songs about the buttocks. <laughs> Yeah, good old Bender. But, you know, Fry, it's supposed to be the moment he realizes that he wants his friends back more than his money. Yeah. So he wakes up and there's some guys there and he asks them what year it is. I say 3,000. So he gets happy. And then he realizes they're taking all his stuff and it's because his check bounced. It's not even that there was some guys there. He asked a robot who was taking his stuff what year it was, which I think is funny, too, because like. It's a good point. There's no robots in the year 2000. He just turns to a robot, asks what year it is. 3,000. Yeah, that's a good point. And then they bring up his PIN number again. You go, 1077. Same as my PIN number. Yeah, yeah. He's like, they must have figured out my PIN number. 1077. <laughs> but yeah, he realizes he's lost everything. His money's gone. They're taking everything away. Because I guess he never paid for anything. He just broke checks. Uh, yeah, it got bounced, which that's that makes sense. I mean, a little bit. You'd think in the future, checks probably won't be that prominent. Probably a lot more like instant cash transactions. For sure. But this was still written in the past. So yeah. But Fry realizes he still has the can of anchovies in his sock. Yep. So then it cuts back to Planet Express and he's there and he's talking to Fender and Leela, telling them he's sorry. And, you know, they sort of realize, okay, you know, we're still friends. But then mom comes in because she realizes they didn't get the anchovies and she's, you know, telling him she's going to write him a check for the anchovies. Yeah, she wanted to bankrupt him so that she could then buy the anchovies off him. Yeah, exactly. Fry tells her, he's like, I've realized it's like some things are more important than money, like my friends, and they're not worth a dollar to me. Yeah. And he's like, so I'm going to share them with them. You know, the food I love with the people I like. And she's like, oh my God, you're going to eat them? Well, 
just make sure you eat them all. You're a growing boy. Yeah, like she thought for whatever reason that Fry was a business genius who was going to use the oil sort of thing, not realizing that he's an idiot who just wants to eat them. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, it cuts and he's putting the anchovies on a pizza and the whole crew's there. And they try it, and everyone, you know, Fry's like, this is going to be the best extinct animal you've ever had. And Amy's like, I don't know. I've had cow. Yep, which is true. We never see a cow in Futurama. Yep, but, you know, they all try it, and everyone but Fry hates it. They all spit it out, and he's like, eh, no one likes them at first. Yeah, and then Zoidberg runs in. Yeah, Zoidberg comes in, and he smells it, and he, like, you know, eats all the pizza super fast. And then he's like, more. Fry's like, there aren't any more, and there's never going to be. And he just keeps going, more, more. And he, like, charges forward, and it zooms in on his pupil, and that's the end of the episode there. Now, I like anchovies. I don't know if you do, but I actually do. I think they're quite delicious. No, I hate anchovies. Like, I wouldn't spend $50 million on a tin, but on occasion, I will eat anchovies on a pizza more normally when I'm out at an actual pizza place. I won't order them from Domino's. Well, I have sometimes. I take that back. I have ordered them from Domino's. I'm an idiot. Well, they talked in the commentary a bit. They said when they were writing this, they actually had a day where they bought a bunch of different types of anchovies and sardines because they couldn't remember the difference and what they tasted like and stuff. And they said everyone ate them and they realized that no one likes anchovies. Anchovies are good. They're not good by themselves, but you put them on a pizza and they're good. They're they're just salty and they add the salt to it. I don't know. I mean, they're not a very popular food. No. No, I will say that. So, yeah. You know, and that's, yeah, that's this episode. I think it's a pretty solid one. Yes. I liked it. There was, I gave it a 77. Okay. I would have liked to give it more because I was laughing a lot in it. And I do like, I know, I guess I'm finding out that I like the introduction episodes. Like, I thought mom and her kids were really good in this one. But I found... Fry's character arc in the second act didn't really make a lot of sense. Like, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he didn't care about his friends anymore. Like, it didn't seem to fit when very clearly when he was first spending his money, he was spending it with them and having fun. Like, it just, it seemed to come out of nowhere for me. Yeah, because I mean, if we're going to do the ratings now, I would actually, I gave it a 75. So you actually rated it a little higher than me. I think it's like you said, like, I think there's a lot of good jokes, but I think the storyline is kind of iffy on this one. Yeah, like the jokes are great, but I don't know. For whatever reason, I can't, I couldn't get behind Fry's decisions, but yeah. I did find it to be funny. Like, I was laughing at, there's a lot of good jokes in this episode. Yeah, I mean, like, they have Leela judging him on how he spends his money, and he gets a little upset about that. But at the end of the day, there's not really a reason he doesn't need to keep being friends with them anymore. Yeah, like, that didn't make any sense to me. Like, they come up to him saying, like, you haven't been to work in three days. It's like, if I had $4.3 million, I'm not going to work. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense, but he could still hang out with them. But it's supposed to be he's just happy to sit in the apartment alone and watch old TV and stuff, I guess. Yeah, came out of nowhere, but anyway. So we do still have our best jokes to do, though. Yeah, so I had two, so I'll let you do yours first then. All right, so for me, it was was during mom telling her kids about the anchovies and stuff. And then at one point, Walt says, this fry must be a genius. And then they just hard cut to fry sitting in the dark in his underwear with just his TV going and the soundtrack of Sanford and Son playing. Yeah. And then yeah. he's drinking a beer and using the sardines as a coaster. Yeah. He doesn't even say anything. That's just the cut. And then it cuts back to mom and them. Yeah. It's a great hard cut because like he's a genius and you look at him you're like, oh, no, he's he's not. Yeah. So I'm going to give my two because I wasn't sure on them. I think the first one was at the auction there. He's bidding with mom and he jumps up and goes one kajillion dollars and the whole place gasps. And then the auctioneer just goes, sir, that's not a real number. And they all gasp again. Yeah. And then he goes, okay, fine. Then he gives the actual number. My other one is it's like the only real instance of professor in this one, but they asked why Fry is going crazy. And professor just goes, oh, they say madness runs in our family. Why? Some even say that I'm mad. Why? Because like, and he just goes off on this very creepy, obviously insane scientist rant and then just keeps ranting as he walks out the room. I'm like, that was clever. Because I dreamed of my own race of atomic monsters, atomic supermen with octagonal shaped bodies. Which the best part is it's it, it's a callback. They come back to it at some yeah. point. But yeah, I thought those two were, were my favorite jokes. Yeah, but I mean, that, uh, that pretty much wraps up our episode for this one. So like we said, we already did our ratings. So, you know, it seems to be a pretty average episode for us. Yeah, I have it right now as my second favorite, and I think that's just because I I laughed a good amount in it. I don't think if the jokes didn't land as hard as they did, I probably wouldn't put it as high as I did, but I found myself laughing a good amount. Yeah, that's fair. But yeah, so, you know, join us next time. We'll be reviewing episode seven, My Three Sons. Until then, you can follow us on Twitter at C with Nerds. That's C-W-I-T-H-N-E-R-D-S. And you can, you know, let us know what you thought about this episode or comment wherever you're listening or give us any sort of rating, anything like that. 
and uh you know you can feel free to listen to our other podcast as well coffee with nerds that's where the twitter handle comes from yep yeah anything else you want to say before we head out nope nope good episode looking for the next week all right well and thank you everybody for listening and goodbye (laughs) 